In Tower Defense Simulator, there are over 40 different towers, each having their own unique mechanics or uses. Normally, you would handpick a loadout to cover all aspects needed, like the Commander for support, the Accelerator for late game DPS, and the Golden Soldier for early game defense. But in today's video, I'm going to be throwing this out the window and using a randomizer to pick my team. Can I still win, or will I die trying? Before I continue, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Hair Mafia. It helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to talk to me, suggest videos, or maybe even be in one, consider joining the Blue Head Mafia Discord. It's a great time, and I hope to see you there. Alright, let's see what my first tower is. <laughs> Imagine I get the accelerator first try. Damn, if I got on the farm, that would have been crazy. Well, I mean, Militant's pretty good anyway, so I'll take it. While it would have been a lot more helpful to get the farm, the Militant is actually not a bad tower to get. Considering that it has no placement limit, you can actually achieve a pretty decent max DPS with it. At max level, the Militant has a DPS of 44.3. Because I'm going to be playing solo, I can place up to 40 Militants, giving them a total max DPS of 1,772. That's pretty solid. While this might not be as good as something like the Accelerator, I gotta take what I can get. It also has hidden detection at level 1 and some pretty good range. Overall, while it's not the best tower, I think the Militant is going to end up being pretty useful. Alright, let's see what my second tower is. I'm kind of hoping for an early game tower, but I'll see what I get. You can't be serious. As some of you may know, the Freezer is considered one of the worst towers in the game. Its DPS is absolutely abysmal, having a DPS of 1.98 at max level. It costs a total of 11,000 cash, giving it a DPS cost ratio of 0.18 DPS per 1k spent. That is by far the worst value out of any tower in the game. However, it does have some semi-okay support. The Freezer is able to stun enemies in place, allowing your other towers to have more time to attack them. Unfortunately, the enemies don't spend a lot of time stunned, so in most cases the Freezer isn't really worth it. However, the Freezer can be pretty useful against fast enemies like the tank, which can otherwise be a big issue to deal with. While I don't think the Freezer is going to be a great help, I think it may end up having a little bit of use. Aye, come on, give me some good. There's no way. Come on. Come on. Oh, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he's hitting me. Okay, so this is a fat W. Unlike the Freezer, the Commander is arguably one of the best towers in the game. The Commander gives a passive 25% fire rate buff to towers within its range and gives a 55% fire rate buff when using its ability. That's absolutely insane and ends up being a huge help. I think the commanders can make a big difference and probably make the game a lot easier. Okay, only two more to go. I need to get something good because I don't know if I can beat the Fallen King with this. Oh, I better not get the Paintballer. Alright, Demo Man's better than Paintballer, but it's still not fantastic. The Demo Man is a cheap splash attacking tower, costing 400 cash to place and 8,525 cash to max out. Overall, the Demo Man's DPS isn't fantastic. At max level, single target DPS is 23.18, though, because it is a splash attacking tower, we can assume it's hitting multiple enemies at once. If we say the Demo Man is hitting at least 2 enemies on average, that gives it a max DPS of 46.36 and a DPS cost ratio of 5.44 DPS per 1k spent. The Demo Man can be quite effective against crowds of enemies if you spam it, but that's pretty much all it can do. It's unable to handle any of the early waves, nor can it deal enough damage to be considered good in the late game. But, despite not being fantastic, it's nice to have a crowd control tower on the team. Okay, it's my final tower, give me something with a whole bunch of DPS. Alright, I mean it's not terrible, but it's not really the DPS I wanted. The Rocketeer is a splash attacking tower with incredibly high damage and one of the biggest ranges in the game. At max level, the Rocketeer deals 225 damage, giving it a total DPS of 59.87. Once again, like we did for the Demo Man, when calculating its DPS, we need to consider the fact that it's a splash attacking tower. Because the Rocketeer's explosions are bigger than the Demo Man's, I'm going to say it hits roughly 3 enemies on average. That gives it a total DPS of 179.61. That's the highest out of any tower in my loadout. Unfortunately, the Rocketeer does have a couple of issues. First of all, it's pretty expensive. It costs 2,500 cash to place and 28,100 cash to max out. That's a lot of money and way more expensive compared to the Demo Man. However, I believe that the overall max DPS is going to be a lot more helpful when facing the later waves against the Fallen King and other tankier enemies. 
But the biggest issue that the Rocketeer has is its huge dead zone. That red circle right there is the area that the Rocketeer cannot see in. So if you place it close to the track, it won't be able to see any enemies within that location. That means you usually have to end up placing it far back, and that means you can't utilize this range as effectively. Despite this, I think the Rocketeer is going to end up being a pretty good option for some extra late game DPS. Alright, our loadout is finished. My team consists of the Militant, Breezer, Commander, Demoman, and Rocketeer. It might not be the strongest team, but we'll just have to see how well it performs. With that said, let's get right into it. For the early game, I decided to not place a demo man and instead wait and skip around so I can place a militant. Unlike the demo man, the militant's actually able to handle a couple ways by itself, so it's overall a better option. The level 0 militant has the best value out of any of its upgrades, so I decided just to spam a couple of those to help deal with the level 10 boss. This worked, and killing the boss ended up being pretty easy. The next wave I had to worry about was wave 13 and 15, as those were the first wave that Hiddens came in. The Militant can only see Hiddens past level 1, so I decided to get a couple of level 2 Militants as they have slightly better value than the level 1. Using this, I was able to easily handle wave 13 and 15. The next 6 waves after this ended up being pretty easy, and all I really did was place a level 2 Commander and some Freezers to prepare for level 20, which is the first wave that has Fallens. Luckily, using the Freezer stun and the Commander's ability, I was able to just barely beat this round. Unfortunately, at wave 21, I ended up losing to yet another rush of Fallens. I realized the issue was that Mysteries can spawn Fallens, so I basically just had to retry over and over again until I got some decent luck and not a whole bunch of Fallens. Unfortunately, no matter how many tries I did, I could not beat this wave. So, I decided to try something a little bit different. On the newer maps, Mystery enemies are actually replaced by Breakers, which function completely differently. Instead of turning into a random enemy, they just split up into smaller versions of themselves. Considering that I have two crowd control towers on my team, I believe that this would be a lot easier to deal with the mysteries. Also, one of the new maps is so easy that it got its own category of difficulty labeled as very easy. I decided to try using this map and see if that would make a difference. Just like before, I placed a militant on wave 2 to deal with the early waves. However, instead of just getting multiple level zeros, I decided to get a couple of demo mans as his splash damage was very useful. The first breakers came out at wave 16, but luckily my demo man was able to easily take care of them. Wave 20 was not an issue either, and the fallens were easily taken care of. And, because of how much easier this map is, and the fact that the mysteries were replaced by breakers, I was actually able to beat wave 21. Wave 24 was pretty close, as the shadow boss almost got by, but I quickly upgraded my militants, which luckily took care of it. However, when the glitches came in at round 26, things got extremely difficult. While using my commander, I was just barely able to take care of them as my Rocketeer was able to clean them up. Rocketeer is actually really good for this map as its humongous range can take advantage of all of the loops. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to save me on round 27 and I ended up getting overwhelmed by the glitches. The main reason for this was because my commander's ability was on cooldown. To fix this, I simply got a second commander and that was enough to beat round 27. For the next two waves, all I really had to do was make sure that I used the commander's ability whenever glitches came out. This ensured that I wouldn't get overwhelmed and that my towers could effectively deal with them. The real threat came out on wave 30, the tank. The tank is a very fast enemy with an insane 6000 HP. My plan was to try and stun it as much as possible, spamming freezers all across the map. But no matter how much I tried, there really was no way I could beat the tank. The closest I got was getting it to half of its health, but that was after like 6 attempts. So, using randomized towers, I was able to make it to round 30. If you know of any way that could have gotten further, let me know in the comments down below. Before I end the video, I'd like to thank Microblox Games, Jonjo6A4, Vexi, and Eat Sleep BTD6 Repeat for becoming a channel member and supporting my content. If you'd like to help me out and get some special perks in the meantime, consider becoming a channel member. It helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate it. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Bluehead Mafia. My name is Corso. And I'll see y'all in the next video.